You're watching Tag TV. Hello viewers, I'm your host Uzma Jafri with another episode of South Asia Focus. Let's begin the show. India has been taking giant diplomatic leaps of late. India currently finds itself at the center of the quickly shifting geopolitical order. Observers say India is no more a fence sitter but a keen observer and a driver of the evolving global situation. Many nations, rich and poor, big and small, lined up at India's door for help in filling the vast essential drug shortage caused by the COVID-19 pandemic outbreak in 2020. India lived up to its reputation of being the pharmacy of the world and acted expeditiously, helping countries around the world to combat the pandemic. India acted for the global good when many other countries engaged in vaccine nationalism. A number of developed nations, including the United States, refused to share any surplus vaccines they had manufactured with other struggling countries. It was India that came to the rescue. Millions of India manufactured doses were immediately distributed to those countries who were not equipped to develop or produce a vaccine for coronavirus. Many countries also gave in to the relentless India-led campaign for a patent waiver on vaccine manufacturing so that access for the critical jabs were available to everyone. New Delhi recently received overwhelming appreciation for their efforts at the United Nations General Assembly session. From the very outset, the Republic of India was a reliable partner and friend whose assistance was critical to our pandemic response. India embraced a holistic and outward-looking vaccine diplomacy strategy. As a result, Jamaica was able to secure its first life-saving vaccines from India. India has solidified its reputation as a trustworthy partner and ally throughout the world. The Maldives, Guyana, Sri Lanka, among other nations, have all praised New Delhi for its unwavering commitment and support in their times of need. India was one of the first responders to the Sri Lankan economic crisis, to the Afghanistan food crisis, and even during the Russia-Ukraine war when it sent tons of relief aid to the Ukraine. India has secured a diplomatic edge over other large economies because of its humanitarian-focused diplomatic approach. While many other countries' foreign policy and diplomacy are focused on trade and augmenting their own power globally, India has relied on its ingrained approach of humanity first, deriving from its age-old ideology of the world as one, or Vasudev Kutambukam. Indian investments into smaller countries are also aimed at benefiting the host nation. Many smaller nations have reached out to India to invest in their countries because of India's transparency in doing business. India has always been an economy that focused on human development, putting human ahead of any other form of development. India is receiving recognition for its increased role in global policy framing due to its economic and military strength and because of its strategic global location. Whether it is the Quad, the strategic alliance to maintain peace and order in the Indo-Pacific, political economic grouping SCO, regional partnership under BIMSTEC, or the intercontinental forum of G20, India has been a key and critical voice in all of these multilateral forums. One of the most important features of India's diplomacy has been its nonpartisan stance. Many countries in the middle of disputes have found a reliable partner and voice of reason in India because of its nonpartisan approach to global politics. The United States, Russia, and China have all been in one form of partnership with India. India's relationship with these nations is at a deeper bilateral level and uninfluenced by events that may cause tensions between these nations. The only reason the U.S. didn't impose sanctions when India reached an agreement with Russia to buy the S-400 air defense missile system is because of India's credibility and respect it has achieved throughout the world. Opinion was divided world over on the Russia-Ukraine war. When India was asked to choose a side, India resisted all pressure and remained in favor of peace. This was a key example of India's approach of dialogue and diplomacy. As the Ukraine conflict continues to rage, we are often asked, 
whose side are we on? And our answer each time is straight and honest. India is on the side of peace and will remain firmly there. We are on the side that respects the UN Charter and its founding principles. We are on the side that calls for dialogue and diplomacy as the only way out. If not for China's interventions, India would hold a permanent place at the United Nations Security Council. India has already received support from the US, the UK, France and Russia for a permanent chair position. Russia reaffirmed its stance in support of India during the UN General Assembly meeting. This also comes at the heels of Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi's polite advice to the Russian President Vladimir Putin over the Ukraine war. This is not an era of war, Modi said, a statement that garnered praise the world over. This is another example of the international respect that India has attained. Given the quickly shifting geopolitical landscape and India's rapid economic development, it is not unreasonable to predict that New Delhi will soon become one of the key players influencing world politics and the global economy. India possesses the political will to rapidly transition into a country that is not only self-sufficient, but is also a reliable provider and ally to countries world over. Brand India continues to grow with the approach of humanity first and development for all. Moving on. Pakistan is experiencing the trail of destruction left by massive floods. People who were sheltered in makeshift camps during the deluge have returned to their homes, only to find that their homes are partially or completely destroyed. Pakistan is battling another battle at the health front as its weak infra has stretched to the limit to accommodate the rising number of people falling ill to the flood-induced diseases. Jan Mohammad Lashari returned his home after spending one month in a makeshift relief camp in Daike only to find that most of the home he left is destroyed. Hundreds of thousands were forced to flee their homes after incessant rains driven floods submerged large swaths of Pakistan and killed over 1,600 people. Lashari said his family and him had managed to escape the rapidly rising floodwaters, finding refuge in the camp about three kilometers away from his village. Authorities said these stagnant flood waters spread over hundreds of kilometers, may take two to six months to recede. This meant farming was out of the question. The father of eight expressed happiness that his family had returned, but he is overwhelmed with the thought that he has to rebuild his home and he has no idea where he will procure his resources from. <laughs> The National Disaster Agency said last month that about 637,000 displaced people were being housed in tent villages. The deluge has swept away homes, crops, bridges, roads and livestock in damages estimated at 30 billion US dollars. UN agencies had begun work to assess the South Asian nation's reconstruction needs after it received 391 mm of rain or nearly 190% more than the 30-year average in July and August. The floods have not just left a trail of destruction but it has taken a massive toll on people's health as well. The emergency ward at the main government hospital in Sehwan, a small town in southern Pakistan, is overwhelmed. 
Hundreds of people could be seen crammed into rooms and corridors, desperately seeking treatment for those suffering from malaria and other illnesses. Three to four hundred plus malaria came out. जो हम टेस्ट भी करवाते हैं टेस्ट तो कुछ की करवाते हैं कुछ की नहीं करवा सकते क्योंकि अब टेस्ट का हम वेट करते हैं इससे बेहतर है हमें पता है इसको तो ये सिम्टम क्योंकि हमें सिम्टम का पता होता है कि क्या क्या होती है तीन सिम्टम होते हैं दिस सिचुएशन इन पाकिस्तान हैज लेड टू वाइड स्प्रेड केसेस ऑफ स्किन एंड आई इन्फेक्शन डायरिया मलेरिया टाइफॉइड एंड डेंगू फीवर The crisis hits Pakistan at a particularly bad time. With its economy in crisis, propped up by loans from the International Monetary Fund, it does not have the resources to cope with the longer-term effects of flooding. Moving on. With India gradually moving towards becoming an economic superpower, the leadership of the country is providing it a renewed push to further improve its pace in order to achieve its ambitious goals. Now, the fifth largest economy, India, has taken a massive leap in past five years in the Global Innovation Index ranking. Have a look. India's desire to become an economic superpower has led the country to solidify its economic fundamentals. India ranks among the economies with the quickest growth rates due to its embrace of cutting-edge technology, outstanding innovations, and drive to become independent in the industrial sector. Ushering in a new technological era, 5G services were recently launched during the sixth edition of the India Mobile Congress. The major telecom operators of the country demonstrated real-world uses of 5G technology in front of Prime Minister Narendra Modi to show the potential of 5G technology in India. There are now 800 million internet users in the country, up from 60 million in 2014. 5G technology will help in providing seamless coverage, high data rate, low latency, and highly reliable communications. For the rapidly modernizing India of the 21st century, Prime Minister Modi referred to it as the dawn of a new era. 130 crore 5G के तौर पर एक शानदार उपहार मिल रहा है। 5G देश के द्वार पर नए दौर की दस्तक लेके आया है। India is not only excelling in telecom services, but is fast developing as a manufacturing hub of mobiles as well. Apple has started making its iPhone 14 in India, as it diversifies its supply chain away from China. The Apple phone, Apple phone, 14, जो Apple 14, जो है भारत में बनाया जाएगा, ये पहला Apple होगा, जो साथ ही साथ China वाला Apple और India वाला Apple. 14 जो है वो साथ ही निकले। Despite a slowdown in advanced economies world over, the Indian economy remains resilient due to the government's timely intervention, along with its encouragement of young entrepreneurship and adaptation of the latest technologies. In a recent report, the World Intellectual Property Organization said that India continues to lead in information and communication services. The report further indicated that India holds top rankings in other indicators, including venture capital receipt value, finance for startups and scale-ups, graduates in science and engineering, labor productivity growth, and domestic industry diversification. Industry leaders are enthusiastic as India rises to the 40th position in the Global Innovation Index 2022, up from the 81st spot in 2015. This indicates how India is rapidly emerging as a global innovation hub with the government's sustained efforts. We are going in the right path and we are very confident that yes, this has been, you know, reaching, coming down to 40 is great. I'm sure further things will improve in the near future. The global economy, still reeling from the pandemic and Russia's invasion of Ukraine, is facing an increasingly gloomy and uncertain future. Higher than expected inflation, especially in the United States and major European economies, is triggering a tightening of global financial conditions. 
India remains the one bright spot in the world. Just a decade ago, the Indian GDP was the 11th largest in the world. Now, with the 7% growth forecast for 2022, India's economy has overtaken the United Kingdom's in terms of nominal cash. While major global economies are experiencing downturns, Grand India continues to shine bright. Time now for Asia This Week, the stories from across the continent. U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken said the United States was reviewing various options regarding its relationship with Saudi Arabia after Riyadh and other OPEC plus nations agreed last week to large cuts in oil production. Blinken did not specify what steps Washington was considering. Democratic President Joe Biden's administration has been mulling a response after the OPEC plus oil producers, which include Russia, agreed to slash production. Democrats in the U.S. Congress called on last week to slash military sales to Saudi Arabia. Some lawmakers questioned Washington's security ties with Riyadh, angered by civilian deaths in Saudi-led military operations in Yemen, as well as alleged human rights abuses. Biden's administration worried that decreased oil output could push up the price of gasoline right before the November 8 U.S. midterm elections, when Democrats will defend their control for the both House of Representatives and the Senate. Biden has yet to announce what steps Washington might take in response to the cuts. Blinken said during the news conference in Peru that Washington would not do anything that infringes upon its interests. Japan's NTT Communications has introduced its fresh technology to establish global data cooperation infrastructure. The company is developing Corporation European Data Transaction Infrastructure GAIAX. Also, NTT Communications is proposed to cooperate from Setena X, the data cooperation infrastructure of German car industry. Its data covers lifetime of a car designing, production and gathering material parts, car production, sales and recycling. Additionally, its data includes effective factory operation, CO2 emission, energy saving and so on.生産現場、工場などに特有の通信インターフェース、カテナックスカイアックスと連携できるデータモデルに対応しているOTMけ及び海外のデータプラットフォーム向けにも対応できるネットワークサービスです。現場にあるデータを集めて分析をして活用するという
ソフトクリームはお味がミルクとミックスと紫芋っていうのがあります紫芋に関しては自家製のお芋のペーストに紫芋ペーストを混ぜて、まあ、本当に自家製のソフトクリームという形で作っております味はですね、まあ、あの濃厚ですうちのソフトクリームミルクにしても紫芋にしてもすごく味が濃いのでまあ、ミルクだったら食べた瞬間にもミルクっていう感じですし紫芋も,もうお芋っていう味がするので結構皆さんあすごくお芋だっていう形で声は聞かれますね。This soft cream with rich flavor of purple sweet potato is developed with soft cream maker Nisei. The development of rich taste, not too sweet cream has been commercialized after many trials. The rich taste and cute shape are posted on social media, and most of customers enjoy taking pictures with soft cream. The heart shaped wafer can be used instead of spoon to soft cream. The Japanese tourism industry hopes the standard for accepting foreign tourists will be relaxed. Eating koi soft while walking along the street with the historical atmosphere of Japan will satisfy foreign tourists. Moving on. The long festive season of India is underway, and a number of events were witnessed recently. Nine day Navratri festival culminated amidst massive devotion and fanfare. One of the most renowned festivals in Hinduism, it is celebrated during the bright half of the Hindu calendar month Ashwin, which usually occurs in the Gregorian months of September and October. The ninth day is celebrated in the form of Durga Puja, and the tenth day marks the festival of the Shara. Millions of Hindus offered prayers in temples and observed fast across India as they observed the nine night Navratri festival. Dedicated to the all nine forms of Goddess Durga, the festival is celebrated across the country with a lot of vigor and passion. And each region observes it in a different manner. In Surat city of Gujarat, more than 30,000 lamps lit the Umiyadam temple during the Maha Arti in the Varacha area. When worshipping goddess Adi Shakti, all other lights are turned out and just the light from the lamps is used. In Kolkata, many innovative Durga Puja pandals were made to celebrate the festival. This year, the theme of the pandal set up by Dam Dam Tarundal was City of Joy, Calcutta, which reflects the journey from old Calcutta to today's Kolkata. Are, are, One of the widely performed traditional art forms during Navratri is the Ram Leela. A popular site across the length and breadth of the country in the run up to the Dashera festival. Performed during the annual Nine Night Navratri festival, the play depicts the life and teachings of Hindu Lord Rama. One such Ram Leela is the Lav Kush Ram Leela, which is put on by the Lav Kush Ram Leela Committee. The Red Fort in Delhi is where the Lav Kush Ram Leela is hosted. It is the oldest and most well-known Ram Leela committee in the nation. In Katak, around 28 idols of Hindu goddess Durga were decorated with gold and silver as devotees throng marquees to offer prayer during the Navratri celebrations. Silver and gold figuries have been used to make the idols that have been put on display at different marquees in the city, also known as the Silver and the Millennium City. It is festivals like these that show the beauty of culture and traditions of India. The Shara succeeds Navratri and marks the victory of good over evil. With that, we come to the end of this week's episode. See you next week. Goodbye and take care.
subscribe tag tv youtube channel and press the notification button